Well, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for having me, Bundaberg. It's such a pleasure to be here. Um, a lot of people said, have been saying to me, oh, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. I love uh, going rural. So today, I thought I'd use some local produce. Uh, so it's all tropical stuff. And um, this is a recipe that I grew up with. It's a Malaysian, it's, it's called a nyonya, um, a nyonya um, dish. Nyonya uh, or Paranakan, if you ever see those two words, um, is a combination of Malaysian and Chinese. So it's when the uh, Chinese crossed the straits into Malaysia and then intermarried into um, the locals, which are the Malays. And this is a cuisine and culture that is born out of the fusion of the two. It's a very, very typical Malaysian dish. It's got a lot of... Um, it, it starts with what's called a rumpa. If you have a recipe card in front of you, it's essentially a wet spice paste. Um, and it's really actually more like an aromatic paste. So aromatics are things like onions, garlic, um, rhizomes. So rhizomes are anything in the ginger family. So uh, galangal is one of them. Um, things like turmeric, that kind of stuff. Um, and then usually spices are things that, are, that come from seeds, so cumin, um, cumin, coriander, those kinds of things. So this is more of an aromatic paste. Um, and what we do is we blend this into a paste, which is what I'm going to do now. And this forms the base of the curry. So you will smell in a minute, it is really, really pungent. And then we add things like stock, water, uh, meat, and that sweetens it up and coconut milk. So I'm going to start off with um, some shallots here. You can use onion if you don't have shallots. And it's very unprecious. So when you blend stuff, just a little tip, if you're making a spice paste, always put the, the juicier stuff on the bottom to give those blades a really good um, Kind of run up. If you put things like galangal or uh, lemongrass in the bottom, you'll find that it really struggles and might burn the engine out if you don't have a really good quality one. And then I'm going to add uh, what's meant to be three cloves of garlic, but these are humongous. So I'm just going to put one and a half. That's like the size of a shallot. Can you see that? So we'll go with that. And then I got something very stinky here. Does anyone know what that is? Balachan. Okay, so it comes in a packet like this. There is a brand that you can get now which is pre-toasted, thank goodness. Um, but it's very, very pungent. It's, oh sorry, it's dried shrimp paste. So it's fermented and dried. So it's like double pong, okay? And it's seafood. So in that goes. And then I'm gonna put four stalks of lemongrass. Now, I've got another aromatic here that a lot of you probably wouldn't use much of, and it's galangal. So like I said, it's part of the ginger family, and it's got a really lovely perfume, um, and it's used quite a lot in Malaysian cooking. So I'm gonna put them in there. Um, I've also got some macadamias here. Um, traditionally, we use candle nuts, and that's just uh, for, for to thicken, to help thicken the curry. So it's a thickening agent. So I'm going to chuck those in there, and then my my gallon gal. Okay. I've also got some dried chilies here that I've soaked for quite a while. Uh, like say for half an hour is the best. Okay. Um, you want those to soften. I usually shake the seeds out of them, but if you really like chili. You, Go for gold, it's all good. Just leave them in. But I use, I'd, try, I'd snap them in half just to let that water um, soak through it. And I then just don't waste any of that spice. Okay, so quite a bit of oil because you need all that to be caramelized. And when you don't have enough oil, what will happen is it will just boil and steam in its own juices, okay? So I actually pop it in right away. A lot of people make a fuss about, you know, wait till the oil is super hot. I actually don't like that. Just, you can add it in when the oil, the oil's cold even if you want. So, we're gonna cook this off. And I would recommend using a non-stick fry pan, okay? Because this needs to be on for quite a while. What you'll find is 
what caramelizing is, is when you cook something long enough that you draw out the sugars, okay? Um, and so as it gets more reduced, it will get stickier and harder to control. So I do like a non-stick pan. It'll take a little bit longer, but you're safer. So this curry is all about salty, sweet, sour. It's really, really yum. So I'll add the coconut milk first, even though that's not what the recipe says. And then some of the water. Yeah. Roughly two cups. So after that, that's all the hard work done. And then um, some cafe lime leaves. I like lots of it. I love that. So that's that. Now, it says on the um, recipe tamarind pieces, they can be a little bit hard to find. Um, they look they look like uh, little dried discs, they're brown. Um, but I've only got tamarind pulp, so don't worry about that. All it does is just a souring agent. So if you don't have that, we're, going, we're about to add tamarind anyway, so don't stress. So in that goes, and then we can add the prawns, and then some pineapple, local pineapple. Oh my gosh, this pineapple is so delicious. And then just follow that through. It looks quite thick, so by the time the prawns and the pineapple cook in it a little bit, some of that liquid from both are gonna leach through. And the pineapple's gonna add this lovely fruity perfume and some of the juice. And then of course the prawns are gonna really sweeten the gravy up as well. 